Hello there, Jaggerverse, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time we talked, we looked at a bunch of different urban geography models. We talked about the developed world and also the developing. Today, we're going to be going into Unit 6, Topic 6, where we're going to look at density and land use. Now, when we're talking about cities and density, we're going to go into the density gradient of a city. What this is looking at is the change in population density from the CBD to the periphery of the city. Remember in our last video when we talked about the bid rent theory, or all the way back to Unit 5, the bid rent theory is at play here again. Remember, land closer to that CBD is going to be more expensive. There's less land available and there's more people living there, so the demand is higher. If we move farther away from the CBD into the periphery of the city, well, land becomes more available and so the price goes down. The bid rent theory helps shape the density gradient of cities around the world. For example, when looking at densely populated cities, we often end up with buildings that stretch upwards to the sky. While looking at settlements that are further from the CBD, we'll see that people build horizontally. This is because of the cost of land. There's more land available the farther we get from a densely populated area, which allows people to have a front yard and a backyard to their home. Now, some societies around the world change their density gradients through legislation and restrictions. For example, many European cities actually put a height limit on their buildings. This prevents skyscrapers from taking over the cultural landscape. However, we can see in the United States, less cities implement these restrictions restrictions. So in the United States, we're more likely to see skyscrapers in many of our densely populated cities. Densely populated parts of the city are known as high density areas. People who live here are more likely to rely on public transportation, have goods and services located near them, less likely to have a front yard and a backyard, and also less likely to own their own car. Cities with highly densely populated areas will have to take advantage of smart urban planning and also public transportation. This will not only help help create a unique cultural landscape in a thriving city, but it can also diminish the impact of food deserts and make sure that goods and services and economic and social opportunities are available for all residents. If cities fail to implement smart policy and also fail to implement public transportation, we may see certain parts of the city get cut off and some citizens will lack different goods and services and possibly be located in a food desert. As we move outward from a highly densely populated area and into more of a medium densely populated area, we'll start to see homes with a small front yard and possibly a backyard. Now we'll start to see single family homes, multi-family homes, instead of apartment style living, which is often found in highly densely populated areas. Houses here are still closely packed together with businesses spread throughout society. This spatial layout may vary from city to city or even which part of the city we're talking about. But as we move further out of that highly densely populated area, we start to have more room. All of a sudden now prices come down and we start to see more housing become available. If we move even further out to low densely populated areas, we can start to see people rely on cars to get around, to access different goods and services. Here, homes have plenty of space between them. Land is more readily available to residents. Thanks to advancements in transportation, new interstate systems, and advancements in technology, people can live farther away from the CBD and still have access to the goods and services that the CBD provide. However, at the same time, as we move more into low densely populated areas, we see that the threshold no longer supports as many businesses. So many of these communities will lack certain goods and services that can only be found in the central business district or in more medium or highly densely populated areas. Recently, though, we're starting to see more changes occurring with the location of different goods and services and businesses. And this is because people are now living in different parts of the city. We're starting also to see changes changes happen more frequently with the internet, communication, and advancements in technology. This has allowed businesses to relocate out of central business districts and move more into the suburban area, as we're starting to see retailers move into edge cities and lower densely populated communities. All of this is happening because businesses are following their customers. Not only are businesses saving money by locating outside of the central business district, they're also starting to scale down the storefronts, as stores now are are becoming smaller and smaller footprints because more people are shopping online. We're starting to see the decline of big box stores as it's no longer needed due to the change in consumers' habits and also the location of these businesses. The internet has made it possible for us to shop from the comfort of our homes around the world. And this is changing where people are living, it's changing where people are shopping, and it's changing the location of our different goods and services. The days of having downtown dominated by
by large apartment stores are unfortunately numbered as these stores are continuing to close at a pretty quick rate. We're also starting to see the decline of malls as more people now are not wanting to go into that big store location. They're shopping from their homes and when this is occurring, malls are having to adapt. Now as our urban areas continue to expand and our transportation, businesses, goods and services expand with them, we'll continue to see more economic, political and social opportunities in these highly densely populated areas and also medium densely populated. And this will continue to change our landscape, both our cultural landscape and also just the density gradient of our city. And as the internet continues to revolutionize the economy and also where we're living, who knows, maybe in the future more people will flock to low densely populated areas and we'll continue to see a transformation of society occur. Now while we're waiting to try and see what's going to happen with the internet and society and the spatial layout of our cities, let's take some time and practice what we've learned. Take a minute or two and answer the questions that are on the screen right now. Once you're done, check your answers in the comments below. And while you're down there checking your answers, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's free, you can always change your mind later, and it helps support the channel. It makes sure you don't miss future topic review videos, and it also allows me to continue to make more videos in the future. And if you do need help with AP Human Geography and you're struggling just a little bit, check out my ultimate review packet. You can find a link in the description of this video. It covers all the units of this class and it'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. All right, geographers, I'm Mr. Sin. That's all the time we have for today. Until next time, I'll see you guys online.